This is very interesting. I was at a congressional hearing this week uh, on Thursday mm -hmm. uh, where they were talking about they had uh, the Republicans and the Democrats, right. both congressmen and senators, and then their uh, staffers. Right. Surprisingly, the staffers are much more intelligent and they know the topic than the, the politicians. However, in this discussion, they were telling us about healthcare reform and how the Clinton and Obama healthcare reform approach differ. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had a time for question and answer, and I had a chance to, s to say my bit. And I said, You guys are talking about, you know, sickness uh, reform. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about healthcare reform. Mm. Health is about wellness. Very good. You're about talking about Very keeping good. the population healthy and well. Mm -hmm. And the doctors are not paid for keeping you well. Mm -hmm. It's not in their interest to look after you uh -huh. when you're healthy. Very good. So I was telling them, you're worried about the money that's spent the last one week of your life, where everybody puts all yeah. the machines and what have you in all yes. the offices there is. And then they you know, not only uh, deplete all the resources of that person, but exactly. really the nation at large, because exactly. it's now a trillion in the, uh, dollar industry. Exactly. So the question I posed for them was, what we did in England some years ago, where we actually give a letter to every person at their birthday. So if it is someone like you, 40 mm. year old young woman, we say hello, see hand, today's your birthday, happy birthday, now mm -hmm. you're 40. Mm -hmm. At 40, for your age group, for your uh, um, ethnic background, right. for your family history. These right. are the risk facts. Why don't you come to the clinic? We'll talk about it. We'll do some tests. Mm -hmm. You'll also join the health, uh, the healthy, well people's clinic, right. where we do health checkup, conversations like we right. do now, right. and education. Right. And then you get paid. The doctor gets paid for sending out those birthday cards and mm -hmm. setting up the series of wellness clinics. Nice. Much more than what you'd get when he looks after sick people. Wonderful. So there is a money uh, yes. interest, so you put your yes. So in the same setting, when like you're talking that. about quality of life, exactly. there are three things Deepak says about yeah. your diet, what mm -hmm. you eat, mm -hmm. organic food, uh, your um, exercise, mm -hmm. and your sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, within that context, mm -hmm. obviously, you talk a lot about being beautiful from inside. Correct. Uh, what are some of the things that you can advise especially our youngsters, mm -hmm. and really women in general, about being beautiful within and also complementing that with appropriate dress, makeup. Uh, talk a little bit about these organic makeups you've been telling Absolutely. me Absolutely, that's very crucial. Actually, it was a university in London, I know you studied in London. A university in London in, um, I believe it was 2001, discovered that paraben, which is the most common preservative that's found in clinics, I mean, uh, cosmetics, skin care, even in men's uh, grooming care yes. um, is li now linked uh, to cancer. What happened is a lady who has a breast uh, cancer, they found a lot of paraben in her, in the tumor. Okay. And therefore, you know, they speculated there is a link between the two. And uh, since then, they found out a lot of uh, things that are not um, complementary to using that in cosmetics. Mm -hmm. So a few lines are changing, but uh, the sad part about um, FDA is they do not necessarily go into uh, skin care or cosmetics and regulate that. Mm -hmm. You are on your own. Mm -hmm. So what I tell people is when I put something on my body, whether it's a lipstick or soap or lotion, anything on my body, it's almost as good as if I ate it because mm -hmm. we are covered with millions of pores mm -hmm. and anything I put there, it goes inside. Mm -hmm. And the th reason why this cosmetics and skincare and you know, groom care mm -hmm. thing for man is called toxic is toxic as you know, stays there. It doesn't get flushed out mm -hmm. and toxic stuff accumulates mm -hmm. and with time it um, affects our health negatively. So in my book, I talk about uh, using alternative cosmetics that are uh, preserved with natural uh, ingredients like vitamin C and vitamin E. Mm -hmm. The reason why companies don't use them is because paraben is very cheap. Mm -hmm. And also they want to use their products on the shelf forever, you know. Mm -hmm. So they get more than you know, their money's worth. Mm -hmm. 
So for me, I demand something else. I want the best. When I switched from the conventional product, and mind you, I was using a very expensive product, I thought, hey, I'm using this, there can't be anything bad. Money doesn't mean anything. Read the labels. If you read the label on some on a can of something you're gonna eat, you're equally you should equally be intentional about reading the labels mm -hmm. on a product you put on your body. The thing about the stuff though you see on the back of uh, shaving cream or perfume or you know um, makeup, the words are this long. Nobody knows what they are. Mm -hmm. That's the hint right there. Don't use it. But if it says, you know. Um, let's say if it says something like aloe vera or something natural you know sesame oil or something like that that's a hint that it's you know so it's, uh, so just watch out for paraben because we're talking about cancer here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the other thing is know that when you put stuff on your body it also goes inside mm -hmm. so be intentional both for stuff you put on your body and inside your body in my book i recommend about a dozen holistic products and also where you can get them all my makeup I use every day, anywhere from the time I take shower to the time I go to bed, everything I use is uh, holistic. One thing you talked about, uh, sleep. People don't realize that all the products we buy for our home use, the, uh, to, to wash the toilets and the house and the dishwashing detergent, all those things, we put them under the sink. They have a lot of chemicals in them. They breathe into the air. They do. And while I am at home sleeping, I'm susceptible to all this stuff coming and you know, and I'm breathing this. So we want to make sure everything we bring into the home because you know, it's if it's got chemicals like that, it's gonna breathe into the air, it's gonna affect my respiratory system. So I'll make sure it is um holistic product. My favorite line is um one of them anyway is um, seventh generation. So you can get an entire ho home care for that. So those things really can help you to sleep well. Of course, the other is don't eat late. You know, uh, I don't eat past six o'clock, the latest 7 p.m. That's one thing. And don't definitely don't watch the evening shows, the news, because your subconscious mind thinks, as you know, you're subjecting your brain with all these problems and then it goes to sleep, it's trying to figure all that out instead of resting. Before you go to sleep, read something in, in, uh, inspirational mm -hmm. so your mind can relax better. So those are some tips. Yes, that's wonderful. I am uh, personally interested in the inspirational aspect of uh, your book as well as your speeches. Mm -hmm. How did you get interested in these things, in inspirations? Inspiration. Well, you know, I know you read a lot, and one thing is you can take a quote, just even a sentence, and sometimes it's like, you know, the defining moment in your life. Mm -hmm. It affects you so powerful, and let's say you heard it in the morning, it's like you think about it all day long, one sentence. So um, I heard one time that um, the, tenth, the Tenth Commandment, uh, the Declaration of Independence, the Gettysburg Address, those are like anywhere from 100 to 200 words, but the federal law to the pricing of cabbage is over 20,000 words. So a lot doesn't necessarily mean good. Mm -hmm. You know, the three I s mentioned earlier are very important documents in our life. So sometimes less is more. It's the content, the substance, and those things can really change your life. And another thing is, you know, the Bible has been around for years and we still read it again and again and again. And for those, you know, who are of some other religion, Quran or, you know, what other their spiritual book is, we read it daily. Why? Because we forget. It's just like, you know, food. I ate dinner yesterday. Why do I eat breakfast? Because the body is, you know, has already used that up. The same thing with the inspiration. I'm inspired today. I'm ready to go, conquer the world. But I've used that energy, so tomorrow I need that fuel again, the shot in the arm. So I love uh, reading about uh, people who've made it there, mm -hmm. and you can learn from them. Now this is very interesting, saying we're going to have a little break, okay. but I want you to think about this inspiration because we're going to talk about how do we inspire uh, young people, especially mm -hmm. young girls, mm -hmm. uh, especially here in the United States. 